Welcome back to We Still Like Each Other, the podcast. I'm Travis. And I'm Stephanie. And this is the podcast where we show that the honeymoon stage can last forever. And ever and ever. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We're back. We are back. Episode 30. It's a milestone. It is a milestone. I'm proud of us. Yeah, congratulations. And I feel like this week has been a week of milestones. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's putting it lightly. Putting it lightly. So we got... 10,000 downloads. Yes, on um Buzzsprout. Yeah. Well, podcast in general. Yeah, but Buzzsprout is what calculates it for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and they started tracking that for us in October. So that's in a 3-month span, which is pretty good for me, That's really good. For two nobodies like Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have any social media clout. We're not celebrities. Um so I'm really proud of us for that. One of our videos went viral. On TikTok. Yeah, that was a surprise. Yeah, it was a good surprise. Yeah. Um. So, you know, I, I edit these. I, I've been putting these clips together. Mm -hmm. Um. So usually we like to sit down and brainstorm clip ideas. But with the baby and sleep schedules, it's just not working. So if I have time, I'll sit at the computer for like 30 minutes or so. And then all right, I'm back. This sounds good together. Let me put it together. And then by the time you're up, I'm like, what do you think? And you're like, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll if it's not perfect, you'll yeah, give me feedback. I'll give you feedback. You'll fix it real quick. And um, this was one of the ones that you just liked off the jump. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just went. Um, and what's funny is usually I will be like, it's, it's too long. I will find a way to shorten it up. It was like 54 seconds yeah. or something like that. And it went out as is. And blew up within that same day yeah it's, it's pretty surreal um it's still going people are still arguing but not only did it get over a million views on tiktok how else did it help us as a podcast in general so you know we always um in the comments of any video we post on tiktok we always tell people you know this is part of a longer episode go check it out on youtube or wherever and a lot of people were doing that so um we hit our 1,000 subscription, um, what would you call it, like a achievement? Yeah, on YouTube. And why is that important? Well, <laughs> well so two things. Um, it's important because it's one of the requirements to monetize your videos. Okay. Um, another thing I found out is that you need 4,000 watch hours annually. Mm. So it doesn't matter if you have 4,000 watch hours over five years, if it's not within a year span, mm. you can't get monetized. Does it, is it year to date, like year to year from January or like or from whenever you from start your, your, ch your channel? From your launch. Okay. So, but luckily we are really close to that 4,000 mark. Okay. So I think we'll be able to get, a, you know, maybe like a quarter of video soon. Right. Because <laughs> we're, we'll be like at the very small YouTube channel. Yeah, we yeah, won't yeah. be making much I, money. I am not quitting my job. But no, not it, at all. You know, it's a nice incentive to, um, let's say one of these videos does go viral. On it'll, YouTube. On YouTube. It'll be nice to get a little check. Mm -hmm. a little show i'm showing <laughs> <laughs> and we're also what five months in yeah um wait are we about to make six months august september october november december january yes yeah. on the 17th what is today what's today's I date I can't it's not on your watch no oh why you don't have the date on your watch I'm, it's the 15th I'm, i have it on my i have it on my um laptop it's the 15th okay so in two days, okay, that's pretty it'll cool. be six months. It'll be half a year. Yeah. It's um, it's still surreal. It's still surreal. The, <laughs> the comments we get, the DMs we get. Um, <laughs> like we spent like a good hour today responding to some people that sent us some emails. And it's it's fun. Speaking of spending time responding. So definitely we always want to respond to people who email us, DM us, especially when they send us stories to share on our segment also y'all can relate however we did spend a lot of time just on our phones this week because mm -hmm. we went viral for the first time we didn't know what to do with ourselves yeah so it's like oh, i'm going to the bathroom let me see what's going on in tiktok yeah we <laughs> we're updating looking at our phone refreshing like as often as we could which and one was, and one of our goals has been to cut back, back. on the phone so 
it's 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 tough because you know you want to enjoy it because it's the fruits of our labor you know it's yeah. the, the the work we're putting in these um we're you know we're gaining something from it and it's yeah. not just the affirmation of the the likes it's like damn you know we really have something here and mm-hmm. we felt that way but now it's like oh a million plus views on a clip from our show and you know people go viral much easier on tiktok right that doesn't take away from people who create and go viral i'm not saying oh it's so easy but i'm very proud that it was our original content you know yeah it's not like we're like doing a it. dance and a- uh-huh <laughs> it's like us doing our show and it got people hooked and it's sharing. not like we're like dancing on the couch with um breast pumps oh yeah we did that too <laughs> Making them things shake. We did that too, and it, it's at about two hundred thousand like <laughs> views. So you know, it's doing its thing. Shout out to them thanks. Shout out to them thanks. Thank. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it derailed our day for sure. A couple of our days. Um. Anything else you want to share about our week? Um. No. I mean, we've just been home. Mm-hmm. Um. You know we. I'll be honest. I'll be honest with the people. We missed our meeting day, which yeah. is normally Wednesdays. I'm not going to blame going viral on it. I'll just blame poor. I, I, well, we spoke about it when we actually did have the meeting. It's just, you know, we have to really prioritize that meet. And once we start, it's just the information starts flowing. Our words start flowing. So it's just, it's like a band aid. Just pull it and get I it over. I say it's time management. He's like, no, we just got to do I, it. I disagree with you just because we could do that in bed. It's a, I have a book and a pen. If we're, but by the time we get to bed, we're exhausted. Like, yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need to make it a priority. Yes, we have to prioritize it. But with that comes time management. So we missed our normal meet day, which was Wednesday, and, but we ended up doing it yesterday, which was Friday. Mm-hmm. And it was, you know, we went through it. And um, we failed at some things. We haven't ordered takeout. I Let know. me clarify. So last week I said that Travis had suggested we order out a couple of times. Yeah. But we didn't order out. Like, it's not like we did because you said we should. So I wanted to clarify that. <laughs> oh, okay. We've been doing good. Who came for you? Somebody came for me, <laughs> but it's all right. Um, another thing that we have to focus on, and we need your help with this. We don't know what the hell to make to eat. I feel like I've always been a cook for our family, but we've always heavily depended on takeout at least half of the time. Um, when we were working, mornings were like a quick breakfast for Eli. We bear, we had coffee. Then we ate lunch out at work. And then we had dinner at home. And honestly, half of the week we were ordering out. So now that we're eating breakfast lunch and dinner at home i don't know what to eat yeah i feel like we struggle so the plan now is as we're making coffee discuss meals and just get it out the way because it'll be less painful when you're actually hungry and now you're trying to figure out what to eat but even in that like for example you went grocery shopping right i made a we made a list together i feel like our list we're just refilling pretty much the same things every week for the same meals for the same meals whereas we never like look up a different recipe or maybe buy the groceries for that we we stick to our our routine what's comfortable for us which when we were supplementing dinners with takeout was okay because we were having more variety but now that i'm constantly cooking it's like all right it's the same meals like i want us to switch it up okay so if y'all have any suggestions on some send your recipes. Send your recipes, send your links, send we like your blog. Chicken, beef. Yes. I'm just not a big seafood guy. He's not big on seafood. I love like me some salmon and some shrimp, but he's not really big on it. Um chicken breast. That's your jam. <laughs> I live and die by the breast. All right. Ooh, something else I wanted to tell everybody. Okay. So our video that went viral was about communication, about Travis working on, (laughs) working on speaking up. 
with my stone face. Yes. Do you remember what you spoke up about this week? I do. I didn't know we were going to talk about that. <laughs> um, yeah. So I was doing my thing, cleaning, straining up. Mm-hmm. And I think I inspired you to start straightening up as well. Mm-hmm. And then you got in the kitchen and then all of a sudden I come out of the back room and I see the recycle. We have um two recycle bins that we keep in a drawer. I see the two recycle bins by the door. And I don't, did I say something before I took it or after? Like before you took it. You came out and you took like a deep breath. And then I oh, said, <laughs> I said, since I need to speak up more, <laughs> I want to let you know that this feels very passive aggressive when you just put the recycle there. You could just say, hey, babe, can you take out the recycle? Not, but, but she then you um, came back with, well, I was just trying to help you out. Because like y'all heard him say, he was already cleaning up and I was cleaning up. So it wasn't like just you were on the couch or you were playing video games. I felt like I was helping. It felt so passive aggressive. And I think this goes for everyone. I think it's really annoying when you already plan on doing something and then someone asks you to do it. Mm. So, of course, I'm like, the recycle's full. I'm going to take it out. And then I come out, I turn the corner and see the bins there. And it's just like. think, oh, she helped me. Not even even for a second. (laughs) And if we hadn't had this these conversations that we had on the podcast, I probably would have let it go. I would have just picked it up and went on the elevator and this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's why I say you should speak up more. So I I have. Yeah. Were you proud of me? I was proud of you. Okay. Even though I was right. <laughs> you actually kind of almost, you kind of spoke up about something else too that I, I just thought about. Remind me. Um. I think we kind of looked at each other and we were like, all right, we have to tackle these three tasks or whatever. Then you got up and started and then you kind of came out and was like. Oh, yeah. It was this was yesterday. Yeah, you were like. I forgot what the three tasks was, but one of them was like, all right, we're going to do this. It was like clean the kitchen, straighten up the living room. And so I was like, I'll take the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the kitchen. I'm starting. I'm doing my thing. And I'm just like, she's still on the couch. Yep, because, you know, we're viral on TikTok. So I was just scrolling and scrolling. She's still on the couch. So (laughs) I maybe worked for like five minutes and she's still on the couch. I'm like, hey, babe, you want to get started? So I was like, tell me. You can literally say, babe, can you straighten up the table, fix the cushion? She's like, what do you want me to do? Yeah, I'm like, what do you want me to do? Just tell me. Like, use your words. I don't know. direct. I became such a punk. And he was like, all right, but. I was like, all right, I'm giving you an I inch. Like, I was like, but. <laughs> I'm giving you an inch. Don't take the whole mile. But, you know. And then you started. So thank you. <laughs> so, you know, we are putting the things that we preach into into actual real life scenarios. So it's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Yeah. Anything new that we're going to work on this week? Um. Uh, holding each other accountable yeah i Uh, guess well that's kind of been a thing that's yeah for me self-care yeah um i'm not gonna share how my self-care has been the past couple of weeks but it could use some improvement (laughs) and i could definitely support you in that yeah um yeah i don't think it's the end of the world but now that i know i'm glad i know so at least i can be behind you and say hey Let's go do this. Let's go do that. I'm glad you didn't notice that my self-care was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> These, I, the wheels are turning. <laughs> but all right. So let's get into topic number one. And it also relates to our communication video. Because in the comments, a lot of people were saying, he seems to have a avoidant attachment style. Or you have a anxious attachment style, which are things that sound like I might have heard of them in psych during one of my psych classes in college. But I'm also like, I'm not going to pretend like I know what this is. Yeah. I feel like everything has a name now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then someone mentioned, oh, y'all should read this book called Attached. Okay. So I look up the book and what I will say is we're not going to read the book. <laughs> okay. And 
before I get into what these different styles are, I'm going to tell y'all all why I'm not going to buy the book. So thank God for reviews. You ever buy clothes and you look at the reviews first to oh, yeah. see the quality or whatever? Um, even when we're buying something for the house, for the kitchen, off Amazon, I do the same for books because you never know. So I'm going to read this review on Amazon for the book Attached. I have an anxious attachment style and found this book to be extremely helpful. The only thing I wasn't a fan of is the way the author insists that avoidant, meaning Travis, according to TikTok psychologists, <laughs> and anxious types, myself, never date or stay together. I understand why it's not ideal, but if you're already in a long-term relationship or married to someone, a.k.a. us, who does not have a secure attachment style, are you really just supposed to throw in the towel? It can work as long as both partners are self-aware and willing and able to do the work to earn a secure attachment style. So I guess avoidant and anxious attachments are not secure attachment styles. And I'm I'm who? I'm avoidant? You're avoidant. Okay, I gotta hear the definition for this. Okay, well, I'm gonna tell you a little sign that I found on the Googles. It can be done. Not only that, but frankly, there aren't enough secure people to go around for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me when someone was like, she needs therapy. And I was like, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> More encouraging for couples to work together to improve their relationship would be nice. Throwing in the towel because your partner is imperfect sounds like the avoidant type's fantasy. I found it odd that they encourage this. Okay, I so, got I got to hear the definitions. So now, since everyone's saying we have different attachment styles, I'm like, I don't want to read this because you ain't going to tell me to leave my man. <laughs> All right. So what I found um, about the two different types. So for anxious attachment styles, the characteristics include low self-esteem, strong fear of rejection or abandonment. And clinginess in relationships are common so signs in this attachment style. I give you two of the three. Two of the three, which two? Um, clinginess and fear of um, rejection, rejection and abandonment. But I think you know you're a bad bitch. Like, yeah, I don't. I don't think I have low self esteem. But you know what's crazy? It depends on the situation. Because I I feel like I've had um, and I imposter don't, syndrome. Yeah, and when I say I think you know you're a bad bitch i don't mean just your looks like you're obviously beautiful yeah but there's so much more to you yeah and yeah. I, I know what you mean baby. and i think you're aware of it yeah so that's why i say I'll that i'm them. the shit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no i get what you're saying definitely like i consider myself to be um a person who's sure of herself but it depends on what because when it came to like work professionally i I had a lot of imposter syndrome. So technically, if you have imposter syndrome, that's like low self-esteem, no? Okay. Whatever. But I also, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't categorize myself as a person with low self-esteem. So I get what you're saying. Um, let me tell you a little more. An anxious individual might be insecure about where they stand in a relationship, whether their partner loves them as much as they do in return. That's you. Why that's me? Because you always need that um affirmation. Do you love me? That confirmation. <laughs> Do you love me? You sure? Oh, yeah. I, I mean this this podcast name is not an accident. <laughs> and it's funny because we, when you say I love you, when I say I love you, we say I love you more mm. instead of like I love you too. So, and I'm always saying no, but I really love you more. <laughs> 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 no, but no, you don't understand. I love you more. So I, I, I can see that. Um, it says, consequently, the slightest disappointment or sign of rejection from the partner can be harmful to their already low self-esteem, which makes sense. So like if any slight thing you do, so like when you huffed and puffed about the garbage instead of communicating about it, it might have like stressed me out mm. more than it needed to. So look at us doing the work. <laughs> All right. So now, Travis, according to um, TikTok psychologist, you're, you have avoidant attachment style, which has characteristics of someone who is confident and self-sufficient. I'd say I'm confident and semi-self-sufficient. 
you're self-sufficient in my, you know. Yeah. I, I get what you're going to say. Like, I might, it might not be. So I'm thinking like food, right? Yeah. Um, you might not get, be the healthiest you're meals. You're going to get Chipotle and Popeye. Yeah. I'm going to eat. I'm a hunter gatherer for some fast food. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you'll take care of yourself. Yeah, yeah, you'll yeah. like pay your bills on time. You'll buy clean clothes. You'll have clean clothes that yeah, you yeah, wash. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay. So you're far, self-sufficient. So far, so good. They do not tolerate emotional or physical intimacy. Ooh. That's off. Yeah, emotional or physical, so like sex, I guess, like or they like don't tolerate it, or like, um, um, what the hell you call when you kiss outside? What's the antonym? Oh, uh, uh, what public display of affection? Uh, PDA. PDA. I don't why know why that I wasn't coming? My mind. I'm like TDA, <laughs> and that's like one of my retirement accounts. My brains and my stuff, but yeah. That's not you. No, I'm I'm all about that. Yeah, you're all about PDA. And you tolerate my emotional ass. I'm so emotional. And you just, like, listen. Yeah. And you don't really get emotional with me, per se. Not always. Depends, but, on, the, depends on the subject. Yeah, but you tolerate it. Hell yeah. Um, Might not be able to build healthy relationships. Um, hmm. Only me. Um, that could be semi true. Why? You know, I, I, um, oh, nah, I'm curious. I didn't think you'd say that. I just feel like my the, the I have a short list of people I call friends, and um, you know, for someone, I'm always very um, I don't know if envious is the right word, but you like see these. I'll see these guys, and they just have like these core group of male friends it's like 20 of them and they take male trips and it's like oh can't relate like i don't i don't have that yeah. um i'm not sure if i'm missing out on anything but it definitely crosses my mind like hmm, why why don't i have that okay so you don't have a lot of relationships but i don't think that means you can't build healthy relationships okay you get what i'm saying okay so um quality over quantity yeah um What's more in the workplace, they're often seen as independent and the lone wolf. I'd say that's semi true. I'm more like I am. Um, I'm one of those people who just likes to get it done themselves because if the person doesn't do it the exact way I like, I get annoyed. Mm -hmm. So semi true. But I will reach out for help if someone if the person I am reaching out to, I feel is um, capable. Do you have a problem with like approachability at work? Um, I feel like sometimes you, I tell you, you have resting Mitch face. Yeah, uh, and you have this deep ass voice when you finally talk to people. Or right, do you intimidate people? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe like new people, but I feel like if you know me, yeah, you know, yeah, you know how approachable I am, and I'm. But I feel like I could turn it on and off. Yeah, like, like my dad is not approachable, but not like once you know him, he's a punk. Yeah, he <laughs> like, but. He's people are always afraid of him for some reason. Yeah. Um, what else? It says these individuals, so um avoid an attachment. Me. Yes. Will let you be around them, but will not let you in. Ooh. They tend to avoid strong displays of closeness and intimacy. I don't think this is me. You think this is me? No, I don't think it's you. As soon as things get serious. Dismissive, avoidant inv individuals are likely to close themselves off. No. Nah. No. Nah. It's not me. This it's is not you. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get this one TikTok. <laughs> you think they got mine? I mean, two out of three is pretty close. I guess. But what's funny is um, what they say your childhood is like to lead to these attachment styles don't match us. At oh, all. I got to hear this. You want to hear it? Okay. Yeah. So, for example, avoidant attachment, which is yours, it says, um, I'm sorry, I should have put this together. I just didn't because I didn't think you wanted to hear this. <laughs> um, let me see. It says, you have parents who were strict, emotionally distant. They do not tolerate the expression of feelings and expect their child to be independent and tough. 
might raise children with an oh they might raise children like you avoidant mm, i feel like that's like half true okay not so much from my mom um but like just a little backstory on me like my parents are divorced my mom remarried her new husband was, was strict? strict okay but my mom was very emotional she's still very emotional yeah <laughs> and so i feel like it was like half and half like i could express myself with my mom but then if i saw my stepfather's face it was like shut that shit down yeah <laughs> um so yeah it's kind of 50 50 50 okay i saw this and i was like uh i feel like i grew up to be very independent uh, like you were a mother at what age <laughs> too young um no for real real talk what age was it i'm the eldest of five so i helped my mom a lot but from... what, what age was it with anthony so my brother people joked around that i was his mom and we're only six years apart mm. um so yeah i grew up to be super independent and it was praise like i i liked the fact that i was independent because people praised me for it like oh wow stephanie could do that on her own and blah blah, blah. or even when other adults might kind of question it and be like, Stephanie's doing all of that. I would be like, yes, I'm doing that. Like, and it, like I, I was defensive when people thought I was incapable of doing things, you know? So I was super, super in the, independent. Um, for anxious types, it's saying that children who were, let me see. I missed it. It says misattuned and inconsistent parenting. What's what does misattuned mean? Misattuned, like so not attuned properly. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna look it up. Misattuned. I'm the teacher and I can't even do it. A lack of rapport between an infant and a parent or caregiver, such that the infant's efforts at communication and expression are not responded in a way that allows the infant to feel understood. Hmm. Okay. Listen, we are who we are. <laughs> All these fucking definitions of who we may be. I, and again, these are from TikTok psychologists. I just thought it was interesting. No, it a is. lot of people were mentioning that. Um, and I get how that short conversation is like me needing um, affirmations from you. Like, are you okay? Tell me. Can I be better? Don't leave me. I, and then I, I think I even said... I'm afraid that you're holding all this resentment towards me. So it like looks like that. Like, oh my God. Yeah. I, it's, you know, people know what TikTok is, but for some reason they still allow themselves to kind of fall into this fantasy of these out of context clips. Mm -hmm. I purposely, like if, if you notice they chop up because I'm just making words sound good together. Yeah. Because we don't, we don't like to put out all of our content in a short clip. We want you to go to a, to download our podcast or watch our youtube video a lot of people mentioned how i said a lot and all you said was like oh, i'm working on it but if you listen to the full conversation you obviously say more than that yeah um it, it is what, I, that's never gonna change um it's just the nature of the beast with tiktok yeah um i think y'all got it wrong this time and <laughs> you know we are who we are and definitely people who need work yeah. Who need to work on themselves. But, you know, we together, baby. So fuck that book. And, yeah, I ain't getting that book. And fuck those people. <laughs> <laughs> we need to write our own book. <laughs> How to still like each other. All right. So are you ready for... Uh, oh, so y'all can't relate. Yes, yes. Um, thank you for everyone who's been submitting yes, entries. We have like four of them on deck already. I'm so excited. Please send us emails. Send us DMs. We prefer typed emails or typed dms no voice notes. no voice notes because we always forget to go back and listen to them and then if you send a voice note i have to like scribe it it's just too much send us a email or a dm and that's way easier yeah all right so this also y'all can relate is called is there a rule book on threesomes <laughs> so before we even start is there a rule book um depends on your partner but i say for the most part yes okay so there isn't really a rule book right i mean it depends yeah, on the relationship then 
there there needs to be rules established mm. but there's no book i agree that that comes into play okay. establishing rules is so important so i'm gonna get started so i've been with my boyfriend for six years and a half but the past two years have been so crazy especially the sex side he's 31 and i'm 35 okay cougar I'm not a cougar. No, I'm joking. <laughs> if it was the other way around, you wouldn't even say anything. Nah. But I have a 14-year-old daughter, and he has no kids. So, you know, that always plays a role. Yeah. Um. But let's get back to the sex part. The past two years, he's been complaining about how I'm boring in the bedroom. I've noticed it started when he's trying to get a threesome. Honestly, I didn't mind doing it because I'm bisexual. But when he asked, it was too late. When I say it's too late, it's because he was talking to the girl and pretty much flirted without me knowing, so I accused him of cheating. Even though there was no sex involved, but the fact that he was already talking inappropriately and she shared photos and lingerie, I didn't like that. So he felt like my response was not what he expected. He said, where in the books does it say that a man can't find the other girl? Mm. And that goes back to us saying establishing, uh, establishing rules. rules. Um, it's like he's n not really wrong, but he's wrong because, you know, I'm assuming because they didn't have a conversation about what was allowed. He was just like, all right, now it's time to let's how do we make this threesome happen? And, you know, it's a slippery slope because now you're looking for a girl. And, you know, once I personally feel once he found someone he was interested in, he should have involved her immediately. That's what I was about to say. The fact that it got to the point where lingerie photos were sent and everything before she knew about it is where I feel like it went too far. You know, because he should have been like, yo, babe, this girl is kind of flirting with me or like, mm -hmm. should I pursue this before it even got to that extent but again yeah. technically no rules were established um you said something i don't know if we're, we're going to come back to it but he, did he say they they have boring sex you said that in the beginning something about um yes so he said i'm boring in the bedroom that he's been complaining about it but <laughs> why are you making that face uh, like the balls on this guy to, to even say that yeah. right um, she's saying that it started after she turned down that uh, proposal for the threesome. So she feels like it's like he's salty. Yeah. I mean, listen, take it from me. Someone who has had threesomes. Oh, God. Woo. No, <laughs> it's, listen, honestly, once you've done it, it's just like, whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. really not that big a deal. It's fun, <laughs> but it's not, it's not a necessity. Yeah. It's not going to make your sex life amazing all of a sudden but if you want to do it you're gonna have that desire to do it at least once okay you get what i'm saying yeah but i think to him mm -hmm. whatever he felt like he was lacking in their sex life mm -hmm. was gonna magically be fixed by adding a third but what it what i'm gathering is their sex life was already good but now that she turned down the threesome. Oh, so you don't think he was complaining about their sex life before, before she, turned, she down. turned down the threesome? Okay. So okay. I feel like he's using it to kind of manipulate her, honestly. Okay. Okay. So, so if, she could want to do the threesome, which is a problem okay. all on its own. So I misunderstood. But I get what you're saying. Some people do think that's going to fix their relationship or whatever. Um. So now it says... Fast forward to now, he keeps saying I'm boring. So, yeah, we are back to that. Because he's not able to have sex whenever he wants or wherever he wants. Okay, so now we're back. Hold on. But I'm tired of telling him that it's kind of hard when I have a kid in the house, especially being a teenager. Mind you, she lives with us all the time. So what were you going to say? So I'm saying, this goes back to my original point. He is saying she's boring. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with the threesome. But it seems like it's been post that. Okay, so now he's years. just bitter. Yes. <laughs> um, but it's also because he can't have sex whenever, wherever he wants. He's okay. not being, 
what's the word like understanding of the fact that there's a 14 year old in yeah, the house that's one of the things that you decided i mean you said they've been together like six and a half yeah, years that's like, what's crazy like y'all been together six and a half years why are you acting like this is new yeah like i've had a daughter this whole time yeah um yeah i don't know it it, it sounds like an immature kid not getting their way so now he's nitpicking mm -hmm. um and it started with the threesome now, so now it's everything Oh, I want to do it now, but we can't because of your daughter or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he just sounds spoiled and entitled. Yeah. I feel like I would 100% need to nip that in the ass. Like, stop calling me boring. Like, that's mad and mature and rude. Like, what the fuck? Also, due to what he's done, it's been rocky with the trust side. So, from him flirting with that girl. So, yes, we stayed together, but due to all the trauma, I've started to get low sex drive. So I understand that I've not been my sexy self because of all of that. But he's overdoing it now. And the more he calls me boring, the more I start to believe him. Mm. So she's internalizing that. And it's like putting so much pressure on you, too. If like someone's constantly calling you boring, you feel like you have to do all this like porn star shit. And then all that pressure, like dries your shit up like <laughs> what no it's true um i don't i don't know what he's expecting but i think he's doing more harm than good um and let's say he does get what he wants out of it at, like at what cost like you've you've broken down your partner's self-esteem yeah for your nut and on a, i so whenever we get these also y'all can relate so we always give advice to the person before we speak about it on the show so it's a little more personal um i mentioned like how that was immature and i know that she instantly said you know i'm older than him 35 and 31 he's a grown-ass man so we can't allow him to use that as an excuse that he's younger to get away with being immature and rude and breaking down your partner's self-esteem you know yeah. like no that's not an excuse he needs to not do that shit um then she states i want to do more sexual but i don't know how he doesn't communicate to me what he likes and what he doesn't like communication so important <laughs> it's like how dare you have the balls to call your girl boring but you don't know how to communicate your wants and needs in the bedroom we need to change that shit like it's so weird that people don't know how to talk about sex not weird. Like, I understand why. It just sucks that people can't talk about sex. Yeah, like, it's not... Although it does happen for people, and we've spoken about this before. Yes, sex... The sexual chemistry does come natural for some couples. It's just they can... They don't have to talk. It's just they, they click immediately. But for 99% of the other couples, you have to talk and figure out, all right, I like this. I don't like this. I would prefer if you did more of this. Tickle my balls. And sometimes you might have that. He just <laughs> let my tickle balls. my balls. And he's like, whatever, you didn't laugh. <laughs> but even if you have the initial chemistry that you click right away and the sexual tension is there, when you're with someone for a while, it you go through phases. It 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 it's like a roller coaster. You I might mean, click a lot. We and, that definitely happened to us. Yeah, we spoke about that earlier on in the podcast. Um won't go too deep into it but you know in the beginning it was like yeah we were i felt like that one percent where mm -hmm. we didn't have to talk much we just knew what each other liked mm -hmm. and then the longer you're together it's like you know i was i was fucking up um and i had to get my shit together but i would never in a million years call you boring <laughs> like i value my life and this relationship and there's a way to tell your partner because Honestly, some sometimes your partner is getting boring in the bedroom. But there's a way to say that where it's not sounding entitled and rude. It could just be like, you know, we should spice things up. Or I know with Travis and I, we might have mentioned this on the podcast before, but if not. But I remember one time we we had a conversation because our sex started to become predictable. What? Oh, that was the bop it. No, that we did talk about the <laughs> bop it. Yeah, so... <laughs> You got to be able to talk about that stuff. And if you 
think about it, predictable and boring are kind of almost like synonyms, right? <laughs> so it happens. You could talk about it so without just, just being choose, fucking yeah, mean. mean. Choose your words. Choose your words wisely. Um, hold on. He doesn't communicate what he likes, so I'm lost. I want to please him, but I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Because not only that, he doesn't make any moves to get me in the mood. Oh, that's another big one. Yeah, we went through that. Yeah, definitely. It's like, okay, we're not having enough sex, but it's like, all right, we need to like figure out ways to increase our sex drive, not just like, it's not just sex. It's like all the pre-work to sex. Um, I'm always the dominant one. He own wait, let me see. He wants this freak, but doesn't help me, doesn't help get the freak side out of me. <laughs> Talk that shit. Help, what do I do? He also says that my reaction when he wants to have sex is not what he wants, which I think is bullshit because he doesn't ever make any moves. I don't know what to do. What do y'all think? Yeah, he um, sounds like he's uh, he has a case of what I had. Which is what? Just expecting... Like you have this expectation and then when it's not happening, you just kind of shut down like, all right, if we're, if it's not going to happen exactly how I imagine it, then this isn't, this isn't what I want. Mm -hmm. Um, the reality is that your partner needs to be turned on. Mm -hmm. And if you're not doing it throughout the day with things we've spoken about before, like, you know, foreplay isn't just eating pussy and <laughs> whatever, licking ass. It's more than that. It's. It's touching throughout the day. It's words of affirmation. It's it's a bunch of things. So, Honestly, I've oh, I might have said this, but um, oral is sex. So some so people use that as foreplay, like to get to sex. No, that's already sex. Like if I'm not in the mood, I don't want you going down on me. So you still need to do work before that. Like stop using oral as foreplay. Yeah, the, I feel like the definition of foreplay should be changed. Yeah. Um. Because like I've said before, I thought that's what it was. <laughs> it's like, come on, let me get you ready. No, like that's already too... Intimate. Too intimate. So I looked up the definition of foreplay. Because okay. you said the definition has to change. I think our understanding of, of it has to change. But the definition is sexual activity that precedes intercourse. But it says sexual activity. Sexual doesn't mean sex. Yeah, but the way we have defined it now, it's like... Oral. Yeah. Okay. But no, it's too much. Yeah, okay. Obviously, we don't agree with it. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, if you're going down on your part... Or not going down. <laughs> <laughs> Who Steph, remembers that? Steph hates when I say going down <laughs> or go down on me. <laughs> But if you're eating your partner out or sucking dick or whatever, you're having sex. Yeah. It's the stuff before that. It's the, I don't know, helping with something or hugging. Depends or. on your partner's love language, too. Um, Something I suggested to this girl, the fact that he, like, he says, what is it? He doesn't like her reaction, like, when he tries, but she's like, he doesn't do anything. Um, he doesn't communicate his needs. I feel like he needs more affirmation, mm. like more positive reinforcement, like for him to feel more confident to start making moves. So, I mean, so I, I remember when you gave that advice and I'm surprised that you would even give advice for him. Mm -hmm. Like it just sounds like you're giving him an out rather than. No, but I first and foremost, I talked about them needing to communicate um, it's not going to be comfortable, like have these conversations, but you do have to compromise. That is her partner of six and a half years. And I feel like if she comes to the table and says, we need to communicate, but all she has are suggestions on ways for him to improve. Mm. He might feel a little like, okay, so what do you have You're to just do? attacking me. Whereas if she says, maybe I can try this and you can try that, it feels a little bit more even even like an even playing field so that's why i gave that advice you know okay that makes sense um but yeah <laughs> we need to stop giving men excuses to be immature just because you're 
four years older than him doesn't mean, oh, I'm older. Oh, I'm older. No. And you've been together six and a half years. You shouldn't have to talk about, I have a kid in the house. At this point, it's like, we have a kid in the house. Even if that's not his, he doesn't see the child as his child. We don't know what the situation's like. And that's fine. Maybe she has her dad. But still, as a part, as my partner for six years, we're at all the decisions we make revolve around my child at this point. So it's kind of disrespectful if you're like trying to fuck all the time when it's inappropriate and my daughter's here. Does that make sense? Yeah. That makes him look even wilder when you lay it out like yeah, that. Yeah. Like what the fuck? Um, I'm not going to be like the book and say, leave him, <laughs> but y'all really need to have some tough conversation. And listen, we're all grown. Sometimes we're in the mood at inappropriate times. And you got to fucking ho- pack that shit up and be an adult. Yeah. There's kids around. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not like he's evil for having these feelings, but he's 31 years old. I don't think he's evil for having these feelings, but I no. do think there's something like fucked up there that, like you said, it's, it's not a new relationship. This is an established relationship. And this, like, these aren't, I, I can understand if this is a new relationship and you don't know how to maneuver with someone who has a child, yeah, especially yeah. a child of that age. But six and a half years in, like, what the fuck have you been doing these past six years? Do you think it could be like a power move? Like maybe he's trying to have a sense of control. So he's trying to see like the limits, like pushing the limits. It's possible. Like even the request for the, the threesome Maybe he didn't really want the threesome. Like maybe he just wanted to see if he could do it. Exactly. And then <laughs> it also opened the door for him to start talking to other women. Mm. And, you know, she found those messages. Mm-hmm. He didn't bring it to her and say, oh, I found a, a potential. You know, another thing I was thinking about with this dynamic. Does she really want to have a threesome? I don't think so. She Why? says she's bisexual. Yeah. But I feel like that would also, that's also something that would have, could have come from her. They've been together six and a half years. Like, I, And I also feel like, has she really wanted to and he messed up in his approach? I would have made it clear, like, this ain't the girl. You crossed the boundary with talking to her before me, but let's, now let's set rules. And by now, in the past two years since that happened, yeah, they would have already had a threesome under the rules that they set. So I have a feel like that's the thing with um, with threesomes and being bisexual and dating one gender, like these expectations. And sometimes you agree to something because you want to keep it spicy and you don't want to seem boring, but you don't really want that. Mm-hmm. Let's see. So you didn't really want the threesome? You know what? I, not, <laughs> you know, we communicate. <laughs> we communicate. Okay. Okay. Um, But yeah. Any last thoughts? No, um, like like everything, like everything we talk about, you know, communication is key, and you guys, you two need to have some tough conversations. They're not going to be easy. Um, for whatever reason, sex makes people uncomfortable. It is what it is. But um, if you see a future together, then you're gonna have to face some hard truths and all this childish name calling like boring is not going to get you anywhere yeah. um so yeah and if you do want a threesome you know have fun <laughs> but communicate yeah and he better know he better be able to keep up because yeah. not everyone's travis that's what oh gonna say. my god no we usually finish each other's sentences no that's not okay. that's not what i was gonna say i was gonna say a lot of times people think they want a threesome but then oh can't handle it wasn't going to talk about you. Adam. But not Travis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Feeling good? I'm feeling good. All right, guys. Um, baby. Daddy. Do you still like me? I still like you. <laughs> Peace, y'all. Peace. <laughs>